It's been nearly a week since Chandrayaan-3 made history by landing near to the moon's south pole. But what's happened in the time since and what's still to come? Well, let's find out. So stick around and let's get going. All right, uh, lift off and the clock is started. Welcome back to another Space News Update where we continue to follow the amazing progress of India's Chandrayaan-3 moon mission. We're watching history unfold before our eyes and it's crazy to think it's been nearly a week since Chandrayaan-3 touched down just 20 degrees from the lunar south pole, the southernmost landing site of any spacecraft to reach the moon. In my last video I mentioned that just a few hours after landing, ISRO was wasting no time in setting about getting to work as Pragyan, the little rover that could, rolled out from its cocoon nestled inside the Vikram lander. An initial series of system checks were carried out and then the two science instruments on board the rover were turned on. Those instruments are the LIBS and APXS. The LIBS is a laser spectroscope which is used to carry out elemental analysis of the lunar surface in the hopes of better understanding the moon's chemical and mineralogical composition. The APXS is doing something similar but instead of firing a laser at the regolith, it uses alpha particle x-rays instead. And while those instruments set to work, the rover itself encountered its first major obstacle in the form of a 4 meter diameter crater. It got to within 3 meters of the crater where it captured this image before safely turning back on itself in search of a new path. And hey, this is what lunar exploration is all about because the position of the landing area it's points like this that are not easily observed, even with orbital based imaging capabilities such as the camera on board the Chandrayaan-2 orbiter, which is still in orbit around the moon and captured this image of Chandrayaan-3's landing site, now named Shiv Shakti Point. Named by Prime Minister Narendra Modi, Shiv Shakti, derived from the Hindu gods Shiva and Shakti, was chosen out of respect for the men and women whose contributions made this mission success possible and with a statement that Shiv, the masculine energy, and Shakti, the feminine, need to come together for the universe to function in balance. And if that isn't a beautiful statement, then I don't know what is. But that wasn't the only thing being named on this mission. The impact site of Chandrayaan-2 was also named Taranga Point after the tricolour of India's national flag. Subsequently, August the 23rd has also been designated as India's National Space Day and will be celebrated on this day each and every year to come in celebration of Chandrayaan-3's success. Still, it would be all too easy to get caught up in the excitement, but the team at ISRO keep hard at work, with Vikram also deploying its batch of science experiments. The first one to give us results was the CHASED probe, developed by a team at India's Space Physics Laboratory and which probes the lunar surface to a depth of 10 centimetres, allowing temperature variants to be monitored from this depth up to and above the surface. The graph here shows the first measurements taken by CHASED and we can see a 60 degree variation with temperatures ranging from minus 10 degrees Celsius at 8 centimetres deep to 50 odd degrees Celsius at about 1 centimetre above the regolith. It's really great to see the variant here because the regolith is an excellent thermal insulator. Remember, the whole point of this mission is to look for signs of water ice below the surface, or at least to figure out how likely it is that water ice is trapped below the surface. Using the measurements made during the mission duration, scientists will be able to come up with a much more accurate model than those derived from Earth-based or space-based systems. But alongside CHASE, there's also a couple of other scientific instruments on board Vikram, including RAMBA, which is a Langmuir probe designed to measure the near-surface plasma density and its changes with time. There's also the Instrument for Lunar Seismic Activity, or ILSA, uh, it's going to measure the seismicity around the landing site and delineating the structure of the lunar crust and mantle. And finally, there's the Laser Retro Reflector Array, or LRA, which is a passive experiment to understand the dynamics of the Moon's system. There's also the SHAPE experiment on board the Propulsion Module, which is going to enable future discoveries of smaller planets in reflected light that would allow us to probe into a variety of exoplanets qualifying for habitability. So yes, it's been a fantastic first week on the moon for Chandrayaan-3, or should we say a lunar morning. But 
And this is why I love covering India's space programme, because as I sit down to work to start this week's episode, ISRO have already announced their next mission, Aditya L1, India's very first Sun Observatory, which will launch on Saturday the 2nd of September from Satish Dhawan aboard a PSLV XL rocket, the largest variant of the Polar Orbit launch vehicle. It's then going to make its way to Lagrange Point 1, a point in space where the gravitational forces of the Earth and Sun are roughly equal enough to keep an object in the same place, and it'll take around four months to get there. It's around 1.5 million kilometres from Earth and about 150 million kilometres from the Sun. And it's currently home to the SOHO satellite. But the best thing about this point is its position affords an uninterrupted view of the Sun all year round for maximum observations. So as Chandrayaan-3 gets set for a busy lunar afternoon, ISRO are getting set to launch yet another incredible deep space mission. Now, if you have gotten this far in the video and you do see KSP's Jeb on the screen, let me know in the comments below with the hashtag IsawJeb, as well as your thoughts on the mission so far. Thank you so much to everyone who subscribed in this past week, and thank you so much for watching. I've been Tom June, and I'll see you next time.